Hi everyone, Rukshan here. Thanks for joining me for this video. I want to continue on exposing RMIT Fact Lab and the fact checking industry here in Australia. And thanks to the developments over the last couple of days, we are seeing more and more information come out. This time, thanks to RMIT themselves, we can get a few more details about how exactly this organization is structured. And that's because they are rapidly they thought maybe no one was watching what they're doing, but they are rapidly updating their website. So this is the live website at the moment that I've gone to. And uh, as you can see, uh, if you scroll down their website here, they've got to keep up with the rapidly changing media landscape. We're always updating our website. Stay tuned. Very interesting. Why would RMIT uh, put such a label on their website during this time? Well, we know that Recently, they got suspended from uh, Facebook as a partner in their fact-checking operation. We know that a document came out uh, from RV Yemeni's defamation case, which I obtained through the court, which showed that RMIT Fact Club has a financial agreement with Meta, a pay for uh, fact-check style uh, arrangement. And that raised lots of questions because that type of information was not previously disclosed by this uh, very, you know, according to them, transparent and open fact checker. They were hiding all that information. At least that was, that's what it appears like. Because now when we go to their website, let me just bring it up. Now when we go to their website and uh, we go to their About Us page, let's just do that. I'm doing this all live. Uh, we're going to go to the About RMIT Fact Lab page. Now when we go to their page and we go down to the section on funding, um, and there's a lot of interesting elements to all of this. I've gone through this website in quite a lot of detail just because I can kind of figure out what's going on here. Now when we go to funding, they actually mention <laughs> as third-party fact checkers, we also receive funding from Meta. Public donations cannot be used to fund fact checks produced for Meta. Now that is, they're saying this because they were also, during this time when they're receiving this money from Meta, they were also solicit soliciting donations from the general public to help them in their fight against uh, disinformation and misinformation because, you know, poor us, we're just a university that's, you know, funded and helped by uh, Australian <laughs> government. Technically, uh, we have links to the ABC, but we also need the public's money, right? We also need donations. But but at the same time, right, we were getting funding from Meta uh, and we had these, uh, you know, arrangements, these confidential arrangements. So if I load up this, uh, this same page uh, from the uh, uh, 17th of July this year, so this is before all this news kind of became public. This is around the same time that I was talking about these issues. Um, and we go to the funding section. Let's just go down there. Funding. Okay, so in this funding section... There is no mention whatsoever during that time about their arrangements or their funding from Meta. So at least in this instance, we can see that they are now being more open and transparent. Most likely RMIT is trying to get back their accreditation with the IFCN. But that raises even a more interesting point about their relationship with IFCN. Now, nowhere in this funding disclosure they've put on their About Us page here do they mention their, uh, I guess, uh, relationship with IFCN. All we know about IFCN, this international fact-checking uh, network uh, that they're signatories to, uh, to be a part of the Meta program, all we know about them is that they RMIT was meant to be a signatory, and they were, but it, it had lapsed, it had expired almost a year ago. But now, interestingly, if you go to their support our work with a tax deductible donation, before they only used to have the button on there that says donate now. <laughs> but now it's you know very made very clear what's happening here. If we go to the support page, and again, thanks to the interesting and wonderful uh, internet, we have the web archive, which can archive pages. And we've had uh, a previous archive of this page just to show you the difference on, on their updates and what they're saying now. Now, not, now in their new, new uh, donation page that they have for this, which is signed off by the director, Russell Skelton, who also has some questionable uh, uh, posts and so on about some topics that RMIT Faglak have been covering, but that's another story. What you'll see here is they also say... <laughs> RMIT Fact Lab is primarily supported by RMIT University, 
research grants and philanthropic donation. It also receives grants from organizations such as the International Fact-Checking Network. Now, I could not find previously if this was disclosed. Uh, prior on their support uh, support us page, they did say they have a uh, relationship with uh, the fact-checking uh, organization. They said, uh, Fact Lab is also a collaboration with global fact-checking and data authorities, including the International Fact-Checking Network. But they nowhere did they say previously until now that they were receiving grants from the IFCN. Now you might be saying, Rukshan, why are you so concerned if RMIT University is receiving grants from IFCN, who are also the people who are, uh, you know, the accreditors of fact checkers for the Meta platform? Why are you so concerned about that? Well, it turns out IFCN, uh, which is this website that does the uh, accreditation for fact checkers, is actually uh, linked to po uh, Pointer. Institute. And now they themselves, who actually run this entire operation, well, they're very interesting, aren't they? They have very interesting links. And this is where the money for RMIT Fact Check or Fact Lab is actually coming from, or some of the money anyway. They're accepting grants from IFCN, from Pointer. How do you even say that name? Okay. Um, they're major funders. You can go to their website, you can look it up. They list everything here. And there's some very interesting, uh, you know, organizations that are part of their funding now and previously as well. But the most interesting ones that come up for me is, of course, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are heavily involved in funding and g giving grants to this organization, the International Fact Checking Network. That's one, right? We also have $1.3 million in grants from uh, Omidai Network, Open Societies Foundation, uh, we'll expand for the International Fact Checking Network. Now, Open Societies, all these groups, they're linked to one person, George Zoros. Uh, New York Post did a, a great piece on this, and I'm just going to read a piece from uh, this to give you an idea of where the, f uh, the funding for IFCN Network, who are giving grants to RMIT Fact Lab, is coming from. One project of the Pointers Institute, specifically the International Fact Checking Network, was launched in 2015 with its initial funding coming from the National Endowment for Democracy, backed by, backed by the US State Department, the Omidar Network, Google, Facebook, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and George Soros' Open Society Foundations. So you can see there that the influence that IFCN has with these other types of groups who are giving them funding initially to even set them up. Now, these type of funding sources change throughout time, but even today, if you go into their current list of funders, you will see that they are heavily affiliated with these, you know, quasi advocacy style, political style groups that are involved in uh, a lot of, you know, some dubious activities all around the world, not just with this particular institution. And the reason I'm saying this is because they want to stress to you, right? They want to stress to you that we do not accept donations from political parties or advocacy and lobby groups, okay? Prior to all of these documents and all of these things coming out about RMIT Fact Lab over the last week or so, we didn't even know that they were getting grants from IFCN. If someone wants to correct me on that, they can, but I'm just saying they didn't, they didn't list it specifically on their website to make it crystal clear that this is where they're getting their funding from. So if a member of the public went to their website and checked some of these details, this was not made very clear. Now, as you can see, the, some of the organizations that I did show you today uh, are political in nature in many ways, even though they try to hide those facts. The very fact that they were backed by the US State Department, the National Endowment for Democracy, there are political influences there. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, funding IFCN and then RMIT accepting uh, grants from IFCN. Can you remember all the fact checks that uh, RMIT Fact Lab did during the, the pandemic, uh, so-called? Do you remember the types of fact checks they were doing? A lot of people had their eyebrows raised over those fact checks. And now we're seeing where a lot of this is coming from. Um, I hope you're following along with, with me on this. I'm sure people who are uh, much better at putting this into a text-based news article form uh, might do a better job of making all these connections but it's there now and RMIT themselves are showing these links and connections because they're having to be more transparent after being called out, right? 
they're having to do this, particularly to get their accreditation back because people are now digging around these links that RMIT has and are looking into this, that they're pretending now, right, with these uh, things that they're doing that all of a sudden they are transparent. But there are many other facets to this, uh, which I find interesting, not just on the funding side. One thing that RMIT has done, so this is on the right-hand side, is their previous About Us page. They have completely removed the section on their About Us page where they say, we do not fact check. We do not assess opinions because you cannot fact check what someone believes. We do not fact check news reports or statements made by journalists. That's the job of ABC's Media Watch program. We do not fact check statements that speculate about future events because no one can fact check the future. Well, very recently, when they were fact checking issues to do with The Voice, uh, it was very clear that they were fact checking journalists, news organizations, they were speculating on the future, what might happen with The Voice and so on, you know, things that many people did not know because we don't know exactly, exactly what's going to happen, right? But in their new About Us, they've removed that entire section about not fact checking journalists, about not fact checking the future and all these type of things. So you can see potentially that their previous uh, mission statement available on their website that was publicly available was potentially at odds with the type of fact checking that they were involved in. And now that they've been caught out, they've gone ahead and now started to modify their statements and their website so they can be in line with the uh, requirements of the IFCN to be accredited. I think that's what's happening here. Uh, they won't come out and directly say this, but this is uh, somewhat of a cleanup job, right? After a murder scene or something, they come in uh, before the police can get there, they clean it all up and it's all it's all confusing and muddied now when you go back there and look at it. Uh, it looks like there were saints all along. But another interesting thing that they've done is uh, they were very proudly displaying all their staff members, right? They very proudly had all their staff members. Uh, you can see here, uh, some of these people here um, that they had working for them. This is prior to all this news coming out. Well, now they have completely removed the section on who works at RMIT Fact Lab. That's completely gone. And I think one of the reasons that that happened is with the whole fact, uh, fact checks over the voice to parliament, it came out that many of the RMIT Fact Lab so-called fact checkers were in fact heavily involved in types of political activism. They had interesting Twitter posts uh, that brought up many questionable things about their uh, you know, unbiased nature of their fact checks. And for that reason, they have now <laughs> removed completely the team that is working at RMIT Fact Lab. Now, whether that will translate into the future when they post up fact checks, they will no longer have an author. I think that's something that we need to keep an eye out for. They could potentially be going down this route uh, to remove uh, the ability of the public to scrutinize their fact checks. They could be going in this direction. Uh, that is one of the reasons I see them have, having removed the people who are working there. One Something that they proudly displayed previously, but no longer do they want to display that. Now, there are many other inconsistencies. Well, not, not inconsistencies, actually. A lot of changes that have been made to the wording and how they operate. Um, they've removed some things. They've clarified some things. And you can see just the panic potentially that's going on at RMIT Fact Lab after they've been so publicly humiliated and shown uh, to be, uh, in my opinion, again, uh, a very dubious organization uh, that has problems in the way that they operated uh, for a long time uh, in, in the fact-checking landscape in Australia, disadvantaging uh, many Australians, in my opinion, with their erroneous fact-checks uh, that, uh, quite frankly, uh, were done while they were not accredited, right? They were done, these fact-checks were done while they were not accredited. So despite what their opinions are, despite what they say, during the period of time when they were doing fact-checks on meta-flat platforms, for about eight months, they were not accredited. So regardless of anything, if we follow Meta's own policies and their words on this issue, accreditation uh, was not met. Uh, they were fact-checking Australians and they did not at any point RMIT make that clear. And I think that is a very, uh, you know, I don't know if that can be forgiven for such an institute as a university uh, should, that should have very high standards in the way that they apply themselves to these type of tasks. Now, and I've said previously, universities should not even be involved in such manner of fact-checking when it comes to 
specifically important political debate where there is a whole range of opinions. There are experts on either side of an argument when it comes to an issue of law, for instance, and how that law might work in the future. And RMIT as a university should not be putting itself as a mediator on this type of uh, in this type of space uh, because it leads to all sorts of problems like we're seeing here. So if you guys want, you can look up the current RMIT website about the Fact Lab and you can also go to the, then you can go to the web archive link via Google. So go to, go to Google, type, type in web archive, go to the web archive, copy and paste the link of the current page and then you can see all the all the versions of that page to make these comparisons for yourself. You can go to the international fact checking uh, website, and then you can look up all their funding. It's very, it's all there. Like you have to understand, a lot of this done is done very transparently. Uh, what they assume is that people in the public will not be looking into this and uh, figuring out these little connections and what that actually means for whether they're you know properly biased or non-biased. They always think that we uh, aren't going to look into this any further. But here we are, we're looking into it and we are showing RMIT exactly uh, for the type of connections that they have, these global connections, these foreign funding, frankly, foreign funding from, from organizations linked to like George Soros, uh, the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation and so on. So I think that's very problematic and this should always help us. Uh, you know, when we look at our RMIT fact check, we need to remember that these fact checks are funded by foreign sources with other interests. And many of those interests are at, at odds with Australian values and Australian interests. And many of the time, those foreign organizations are heavily involved in activism and political, uh, political types of advocacy and lobbying in other parts of the world. And, you know, strangely, I believe through uh, helping organizations like RMIT Fact Lab, these same kind of institutes are influencing Australians in the direction that they wanna take our country in. Anyway, guys, if you're enjoying my work, you can follow along on uh, X at The Real Rukshan on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Odyssey, Rumble, and YouTube at The Real Rukshan or look up Rukshan Fernando. See you all next time.